I'm going to take you through seven of my top tips for licensing photos that you can start using right now to begin earning more money from licensing your work. Tip number one, understand that your photos have value. One of the first things in developing your licensing mindset is understanding that companies actually need your photos. They rely on them for so many things. Photos help companies build their brands and shape their identity and ultimately sell their products, which in turn, of course, makes them money. So if your photos can help a company grow and make more money, then by definition, they provide value for that company. With tens of thousands of home product companies out there, most of them just don't have the resources to produce their own in-house photo shoots. Some brands even struggle just to hire a photographer to go out and do a shoot. So there are tons of companies out there who truly rely on photos sent to them and sold to them by photographers just like you. Tip number two, have conversations about licensing with your clients and have them early and often. The key here is to educate your clients and speak openly about your business. From the very first interactions with your client, you can begin to educate and set proper expectations so there are no surprises down the road. And have these conversations often. It's not enough to just have a small line of text about licensing buried in a contract somewhere. There are numerous times throughout the photographic process where licensing can come up in a casual conversation. Be prepared for these conversations by knowing your stuff and being confident, not only in the value that you bring to them, but in the rest of your business practices. Tip number three, look through your old content. You may be surprised at how many photos you have tucked away on a hard drive that can be sold. Go through your archives and look for these potential money makers. Once you learn to identify what kinds of photos sell better, the strong images that have potential to sell will jump out at you. From there, it's just a matter of finding out which vendor made the products in those photos. Then you'll be ready to find the right contact and make the pitch. Unfortunately, we don't have the time here to go into detail about that. But at the end of this session, I'll tell you about a course that I'm offering where we'll cover all these things at length. And in the course, we'll demonstrate exactly how you can quickly navigate through your archives to look for these photos. Tip number four, look for logos while you're shooting and write them down. When you're on a photo shoot, you're probably hyper-focused on the task at hand, which is getting the shots your client wants. And that's great. However, once you've developed your licensing mindset, you'll learn to effortlessly spot manufacturer logos while you're on site. You can open cabinets, inspect faucets and fixtures, peek inside bathtubs, and get up close and personal with things like fireplaces and windows to look for logos or other identifying marks. The goal here is to find out who makes the products so you know who you can potentially sell to. And when you do find out, jot down a quick note on your phone and save that valuable information for later. Tip number five, use templates. Once you figure out an effective way to interact with vendors, stick to what works. Use a text template that you can copy and paste from. There's no need to craft a new email for every pitch follow-up, or file delivery correspondence. You can even use a template anytime you see one of your photos reposted on Instagram without your permission. Using a well-worded template will allow you to target more companies in less time. And the quicker you are at dealing with all these things, the more likely you'll be to make the time for adding licensing into your workflow. And of course, the more pitches you make, the more chances you give yourself to make sales. Tip number six, stay organized. This is similar to using templates. So the idea here is to develop systems that will help you work smarter, quicker, and more efficiently. You'll wanna find systems for keeping your photos, contacts, emails, and invoices organized. Having your photos organized will help you comb through them for sellable content in your previous work. And it'll make it much easier to find and send low res samples to vendors and eventually pull the high res files when you make a sale. Keeping your contacts organized will allow you to quickly pull up any email address of a company you've already encountered before. The more companies you come across and add to your spreadsheet, the less time you'll spend searching for them the next time you find that company in one of your shots. To do this, you can use a spreadsheet that includes the company's name, the contact's name, their email address, their phone number, and a blank field for important notes about that contact. Remember, the easier we make this process on ourselves, the more likely we'll be to add it into our workflow. And the more integrated it is into our workflow, the more chances we give ourselves to make more money. And the final tip to help you license more of your photos, tip number seven, just shoot more. And no, this isn't just a cop-out tip to fill up time. Hear me out on this one. I'm not talking about getting hired more. 
I'm talking about shooting more on your existing photo shoots. Let me explain. If you're shooting for a real estate listing, you can consider taking extra shots that you don't plan to deliver to the agent that hired you. Shots specifically for potential licensing opportunities. These could be tighter, more artfully thought out compositions or details of surfaces and fixtures. You can also think about taking a series of extra photos of an apartment common area or amenities at an apartment complex that you can license to other agents that may list different units in the same building. If you're shooting a house for sale, look for business cards on the counter for the staging company, interior designer, or the builder who worked on the house. Maybe you can license photos to them. If you're hired by a designer or a builder, after you have the shot they're looking for, don't be afraid to ask them if you can adjust the tripod and snap another quick shot of a certain product, like maybe a tighter detail of a faucet or something like that. As you develop your licensing mindset, all of these things will start to come much more naturally. All kinds of new opportunities will begin to jump out at you. Licensing will effortlessly find its way into your everyday workflow. So there you have it. Doing these seven things starting right now can help put you on the path to earning more money from your photography. We obviously can't cover everything there is to know about licensing in this session. So we've just touched on a few things here when it comes to licensing your photos. But this should give you the basic idea so you have a head start. However, if you want to learn more about these topics and a whole bunch more, and really dive into making more money from licensing your photos, I want to tell you about a course I've put together to help you out. It's called Learn to License Your Photos. In the course, I'll not only dive deeper into each of these things I talked about today, but I'll also share with you all of my strategies, all of my systems, and all of my email templates. But most importantly, I'll help you develop your licensing mindset. This will give you that foundation you need to really set yourself up for success.